Distinguished guest, Mr. Kristof Chizewski, his wife, Magosha, Dean of the Faculty of the Arts, Professor Tzvika Serper, colleague and co-organizer of this event, the historian Avner Ben Amos, Professor Avner Ben Amos. Dear students and guests, we have gathered here in the Theater Arts Department in order to celebrate and pay tribute to Mr. Christoph Chizewski, the founder of the Borderland Foundation, who is, among many things, and if I may say, first and foremost, a theater practitioner and a theater artist. It's my honor to invite now Dean of the Faculty, Professor Zvika Serper, to open the occasion. Please. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to welcome the, 14, the, the 2014 Dan David Prize Laureate for the Pastime Dimension, History and Memory, Mr. Krzysztof Chizewski, a renowned Polish publisher, writer, and theater director, actor, and producer, intellectual and social activist. Mr. Chizewski's life and work for many decades has been dedicated to integrating the Polish past into the creation of a society that is capable of recognizing the complications of the past and that insists on their inclusion in the country's foundations in both its present and its future. His professional word is the very embodiment of the theme history and memory. In this respect, Mr. Chizewski teaches us the importance and the potentiality in arts that not only retain their roots, but also produce from them new creations. I found myself greatly attracted to your work, Mr. Chizewski, and especially to your wonderful creations with the Gaji Gaji Gajienzi Theater Company in Lublin. Japanese is much easier for me than Polish. <laughs> which collects ethnographic materials from around the world and creates from them what has been called an ethno oratorial song theater. On the personal level, as a scholar of Japanese traditional theater, I engage with a culture that retains its heritage intact while also developing new creations based on its past. The Japanese avant-garde theater and Japanese cinema create new dimensions through the application of various elements from the art that preceded them, the traditional theater. On the faculty level, I am proud that the study and research of the past finds reflection in each of the five arts that comprise our faculty. Theater, cinema and television, art history, music and architecture. I will be even more delighted to see in the future in those of the faculty's schools and departments that offer practical studies and creative work, theater, cinema and television, music and architecture, a greater interweaving and revival of classical and pre-modern elements from the past within the new art pieces that are being created here. I would like to thank you, Mr. Chizewski, for coming to our faculty and presenting us with your work. I would like also to express my gratitude to Professor Shulilev Alagem, Chair of our Department of Theater Arts, and Professor Avner Ben Amos from the School of Education, who initiated and organized this wonderful encounter. I wish you all a pleasant, intriguing, and enlightening event. Thank you. I will introduce now in few words our guest. We are mostly honored 
to host here in the theater arts department, Mr. Krzysztof Czizewski, who has just received Dan David Prize for the past dimension, history and memory. Krzysztof Czizewski is a Polish intellectual who has been often simultaneously a political activist, theater performer and producer, essayist, poet, publisher, and especially the founder and director of the Borderland Foundation. In this project, he is in fact bundles all these categories together in ways that are distinctly his own and continues to develop his aesthetic, political, and theoretical agenda, which he has already established back in the 1970s with his experimental theater, the Gardenice Theatrical Company. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout his career, Christoph Czizewski has worked toward inter-ethnic, cultural, artistic, and social interchange in East Central Europe, including the revival of Jewish culture. In fact, one of the centers of Borderland Foundation is located in Seine, in the renovated former white synagogue and yeshiva. The project of Borderland Foundation is based on Christoph Czizewski's idea of constructing a living society through memorializing, reviving, and reinforcing the rich cultural diversity in Central Eastern Europe. The Institute of Borderland Foundation, which was established in 1990 as a center of arts, cultures, and nations, comprises a school, several studios, an archive, a publishing house, and a cafe. In addition of publishing excluded and forgotten texts, the foundation organizes theatrical performances, educational activities, exhibitions, and discussions, all of which are based on the idea of fostering the borderland not as a dividing line, but as a generative space of diversity, pluralism, and multiculturalism. During the years, Krzysztof Czizewski, who has become a central figure in the European cultural life, has brought the foundation's working model to various regions of ethnic and national conflict around the world. Israel, as we all know, is unfortunately such a region for too long. So we definitely need you, Christoph, to stimulate and encourage us how to construct a new bridge toward and with the other. I call now Mr. Christoph Czizewski, the protagonist of our event today, who will speak about theater, a forgotten art of bridging the other. Please. Not easy. <laughs> Thank you very much for these warm words, this invitation, and this gathering, giving me the opportunity to share with you some of my experiences uh, around the theater work. I'm in, in a difficult situation because I will tell about forgetting something, although this morning during the panel discussion I said that we do not forget. And I will uh, tell about my theater experience uh, being a person who lost the belief in theater many years ago and trying to struggle all the time to come back to theater. Uh, in a new form and in a new way. And I will share some, with you some practices and ideas which I don't know enough well to have already answers. So what you will hear is 
just a message from the way I'm, I'm traveling on rather than the experience of a final results. Mm, uh, but using this opportunity and this invitation, I, I, I mm, uh, choose this title about the theater as a for, uh, forgetting art of bridging the other, which goes to the core of my dreams, my life experience, and my um, searching. A few days ago, we are together with Małgosia, uh, already several days in Israel, we were visiting Jerusalem, and our friend uh, from the city told us a story about the installation uh, that was initiated some time ago to, cre to, to creating a swing over the wall. Uh, as a kind of bridge and a symbol of deconstructing the wall or the swing as something what is bridging two sides or inviting for, for this travel in between the borders over the wall. What, it was very moving for me not bec only because of the context, of the contemporary context of that, b but because it goes to the very beginning of the theater, which I understand as uh, as a bridge to the other. And maybe you you can recall together with me this situation in an ancient Greece community. At the very, very beginning, the, the drama which happened between human beings and the gods. Uh, it is, of course, about the Dionysius, the god of theater, who came down, stepped down on the earth to meet the first man, human being, offering him a wine as a gift. The man was Icarius, and Dionysius asked him to share this wine with his neighbors. And when he did it, they became drunk, and they thought that it is a poison which will kill them. So, in, uh, in an action, in response to that, they killed Icarius and left him under the tree, uh, Unburden. His daughter, Erigone, started to sh search for his father. And when, when he ha came to this tree and saw the de dead body of his father, she committed suicide hanging on the tree branch. It was a, when Dionysius heard about this tragic story, he he wanted to uh, to suppress Athenians citizens and made a curse that each young woman in these Athenian families will commit suicide and they will hang themselves on the trees branches to to tame this tragic situation. Uh, the king of Athens went to Delphi, of course, to, to be advised what to do and so on. So Athenians had to establish a ritual, which for me is the first theater in our Western civilization. What it meant, which ritual? It, it was, you know, it was then commemorated in Antisteria, one of these Holy, especially, uh, special holidays where theater were performed, but before it was established as a holiday, as a ritual, they had to hang swings on the branches 
and men should swing the woman, trying to re repeat the same movement and the same gesture Arigona did for his father. And this swinging movement is for me the first theater gesture you do to cure your pain when you lament, when you try to tame the pain which is inside you because of the broken bridge, because of something tragic with, with, which happens in the community, but also within ourselves, you swing. You make this body movement, this psyche movement, from one side to the other, from one side to the other, from yourself to the other, from human being to the God, from one bank of the river to another, bank of the river. This is how, uh, in my imagination, theater was established to tame this pain because of the broken bridge, because of a broken relationship with the other. It was the first bridge, the swing, and the whole rituals. Uh, that's, of course, my interpretation. But even in the ancient Greek vases, you, you can see sometimes satyrs, but sometimes, uh, man's swinging woman as, as a ritual which remained for many years, even in ancient Rome. It was repeated not with the body, but with the puppets. They hang on the trees as, as a symbolic commemoration of this first time of the drama which happened between different words, gods and humans, ours and the others, uh, and the first threshold. So at the very beginning uh, of our history, and maybe it was a born of history, is where the bridge is broken and destroyed. This is something what consists our human life. I'm a bridge builder for many years and I can't remember a situation when we built a bridge from the scratch. Always you rebuilding something what was destroyed in the previous time. There is no zero situation in, uh, in that work. And it brings me to the very beginning of our history and of our life. So thinking about theater, I think about something what can bridge us with the other as a ritual, as an instrument, as a tool uh, which consists the theater activity uh, in general. And of course, the question is, uh, why forgotten art of bridging the other? And uh, this is something what I will try to uh, to answer during my uh, my speech, and maybe we can refer in the discussion later on on that. But coming back to my Garzinice theater experience, and let's I will start with some presentations of the photographs yeah. let's have it as a starting point uh, this photo is from the journey to the east the first borderland project and program we mm, uh, we realized in 1990 but it uh, but it refers to mm, to the previous time i uh, with garjenice and later on in the 70s and 80s our work was mostly based on so-called expeditions which uh, were kind of a um, journey to different communities in the world. We started with Poland, mostly Eastern Poland villages, but then we traveled all over the world with 
different expeditions to the community, communities which somehow survive ancient rituals, songs, gestures, something what we were uh, enormously interested in as theater people. And we were uh, organizing this expedition to explore, to register, to know the, these ancient forms of theater and music and other cultures. And on the basis of, of that, we built our avant-garde performances. It was the whole movement in the theater world. And this, I started in the 70s with Garginice, but before you had Grotowski uh, with his theater of sources. You, have, you had Peter Brook traveling to Africa and other parts of the world. You had Eugenio Barba traveling to Southern, uh, Southern Am uh, America and, and so on and so on. And we were like a one family. Grotowski, Brook, Barba were very often with us, with Garginice, uh, during our expeditions. And we share this experience, we explore the traditional cultures and, and build the performances. So the uniqueness of Garginice at that time was that, that mostly uh, you know, the Grotowski stopped to, to make performances and he went into the direct actions uh, with, uh, with audience and developing so-called active culture. But in Garginice, we tried to, uh, we tried to come back to the performances as an important part of, of the expedition also and of our, our theater life. And it was a wonderful adventure and experience, of course. But the problem I had during that time with expeditions and with this kind of work, was that you see you travel to the uh, to the people in the villages in different parts of the world you ask them to share with you treasures they uh, they have so you ask you are asking them about the golden fleece to come back to another greek myth, which is very important for, for me. And so you take a gift from the community. And the, the question was how to give back. The expedition long for a few days, maximum a few weeks. <laughs> The important relationships were established with local people, with native people, different promises, friendship, love, honesty. Even they should be sometimes very brave to share with us the memories and uh, other mysteries of the community. And we went out to the festivals with our performances, gained the fame in international theater world, but never coming back, or very rarely, in fact. So my experience somehow from that time is, was, it's my personal thing, of course, that I'm very kind of a burden of, of a gift I accepted, you know, like Medea was giving something to Jason uh, from the very heart of the community, of the colleges, and having no chance, no instruments, no theater form to give it back. And because of different reasons, because of being theater people, because of being actors and having this fate of actors, you know, traveling from one place to another. In, uh, in fact, and living, you know, from one festival to another. Mm. So the, something was always in, in the back of my head, you know, that I wish I would laugh to find the way how I can give this 
uh, gift back. And of course, it, it was something more because now we call it, you know, the intercultural dialogue, exchange of cultures and so on. This was something what we did in the 70s. But this meeting the other culture was also on the very surface. Yes, that we, you had very short time for the expedition, for the meeting, for explore this. Something only began and there was no way to go deeper. There was no way to continue it on the long term uh, dimension. So also there was this uh, uh, this un insufficiency, I felt that something began, very important, we are on the beginning of the journey, and there is no way to continue it, in fact, because we are kidnapped immediately to the, another milieu of theater life, in the festivals and other things like, like that. So, this expedition, you see on this picture in 1990 was not uh, anymore the expedition uh, like we did before in the 70s and 80s. It was a revolutionary thing for us at that, uh, that, uh, that time because we decided with my theater group, which consists now the team of the Borderland, that we we do this expedition, we build the, the, the wagons for our ki the children, for our stenography, we had a horse, we had a jeep uh, 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 together with us, but we decided to, to, to move to the east, part of Poland, but at the same time we decided not to come back to the festivals and to the big cities, but find the way that we can stay with this Tabor, with this expedition, in a very community somewhere in the borderlands of Eastern Poland. And the most revolutionary decision we did was when we came to this small town, Seine, in 1990, after several months of, of traveling uh, as a theater troupe, of course, we, we were working on the performance on the way on Bloody Wedding by Lorca, uh, Garcia Lorca. Th this revolutionary decision in, in Seine was, okay, we stopped here. And we tried to establish our life here in the community. Uh, and we will see what will happen after. So it was like kind of an intuition we had that we don't want to continue the former way of being engaged in theater, but rather building a new Poland, you know, building a new situation after 1989, that we f uh, should find another way of being a, a theater people among, uh, among community and, and so on. Wieczorne, bo będziemy grać, może będziemy... Nie po polsku też mówię. Też mówię, tak. <laughs> Zapraszamy dzisiaj na spotkanie z muzyką, bo to są bo to najlepsi muzykanci na świecie. Najlepsi muzycy z gdzie to było? Będzie się... Dzisiaj, tutaj w siedzibie gminy. O siódmy. O siódmy? Tak. I bardzo przyjdzie. Mi się nie liczy, że z nie liczy, że liczy. Z imadzieją. Z imadzieją. O siódmy, tak. O siódmy, tak. Tutaj jest ogłoszenie. Z imadzieją. Z 
Okay, what I presented to you, uh, the fragment of, of the documentary film, many uh, times something like that happened for us during expeditions. A wonderful moment when, when you can see how art can work. But usually that happened like here in Vilnius, with artists coming for one, two days, something special happened, and then the theater left, like artists usually do. I, I showed you this fragment not because it is interesting as an art influence, but I want to to start from that, to say that having this experience and having these kind of meetings, the decision was that we stay with these people, that this is just the beginning. This is not only the holiday we created for them, but we try to decide uh, and, or, uh, you know, to, to share with them daily life. 
and try to find the way how these kind of uh, special moments can work for the community for the longer term and for all kind of generations and of, for all kind of people uh, in the community. So uh, on the background of this picture you saw young people playing klezmer music with these New Yorkers, uh, klezmers like Michael Albert and others. Uh, and these youngsters were for, uh, from our town, from Saini, uh, trying to be part uh, of that, but they became also our um, partners in, in our theater work on the daily life uh, in Seine. In Seine. So, the question we, uh, we had as a theater people was if we decide uh, to stay, if we decide to go further and deeper than these first initial meetings, uh, and holidays, how we can do it. Uh, and the first decision we did was to be stopped to be a theater group in Seine. Overnight, very painful decision. But the situation was that even, you know, physically, we presented to the, to the community two or three times our performance, our Lorca performance from the stage. And of course, we, we could continue with this performance, traveling further on. But at the same time, something what was difficult for us was this stage itself. Yes, that we were talking to these people from the stage, from our experience, from our craft and knowledge. But in fact, we wanted them to speak to us. Because the knowledge, the experience of this borderland was on the other side of, of this theater space. So it was par partially an arti artificial thing for us at that very moment to be on the stage in front of the people somehow. Yes. Yes. Yes, about uh, uh, blood wedding uh, performance. So that's so. What it means to 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 stop to be a theater it, in in practice for us it meant that we step down from the stage and try to find the way people will speak to us, will share, uh, we will talk, and will uh, will participate in something what will prepare uh, propose to uh, to them. So we became more and more kind of, we, we use this uh, term animators of uh, culture, uh, uh, which you can refer to film animation, but in fact we have this very special term of different kind of culture activity, action culture, when you're becoming an animator of the community using culture as a tool for a common uh, life project and uh, actions and so on. Okay, so that's how it started. For many years, we stopped being actors. We invited young, especially young people, to be actors in our uh, performances and theater actions. And the scenario of our theater was based on the knowledge of the local people and their stories, their memories, and their witness of, of the history. And another thing which was very important for uh, at that moment which we discovered at the ground was that the, the community is very much divided into different groups, memories, ghettos, Lithuanians, Poles, rational believers, young, old people. It was also a deep division, the forgotten uh, and uh, uh, forgotten spaces of our common memory like Jewish, like Protestant and so on. So how to make this connective tissue between all these islands and separated cases. How we can do it using theater also. How you, we can create a common story through uh, theater. This was another challenge we, uh, we experienced at that moment and that time. And the perf performance which we have till now, which uh, have now more than 15 years old, is so-called Seine Chronicles. 
which started from such kind of gatherings you see in, uh, on that picture when we used the synagogue space for the whole community gathering to share different stories and memories. It's, it's another type of ritual we invented in the society. There was no such space and holiday and, uh, and a special day that we can meet all together in one space, under one roof, and share stories, memories, and um, art, uh, art together. So this table you see around here, it is like a new invented ritual. We, each year, in the 1st of November, in the All, all Souls Days, we gather like that to, uh, to use the common space and this gathering for being together and sharing sometimes very dramatic, sometimes very brave stories from different uh, people. But after that, what, what comes after that, it was, you know, the, the art form, the theater performance, which was built on that discussions and conversations, and where young people of Seine were main actors. Uh, now we have a fourth generation of this performance in the community. Each generation works on that like five, six years. They go into the performance, they go into the characters of, uh, of uh, different persons, different stories. We call, it, call them even not actors, but the storytellers of Seine Chronicles. And when time, uh, time comes for change, they are tutors for the younger generation and helping them to become part of the performance, giving them the skills, the experience they gain, and also the floor to add some new stories, some individual, their own pieces to this performance. So it's becoming longer and longer. We started with half, half an hour performance, now it is mo uh, uh, around two hours uh, of the performance. Why? So it is like having a, the performance, which is a small epos of the community, a common narrative we can build through this performance uh, over long time period, having it as a generation passing to the generation uh, knowledge. And this is also very interesting from the theater point of view, what, what we observe uh, through this process, that the theater very much is not about the new story you tell to the people, because they know these chroni Seine Chronicles stories very well. They know by, by heart all the stories we want to, uh, to tell them. But the way how new actors, new people incarnate in the characters of the community they know very well is somehow a mystery of a theater, uh, I guess, very much. The whole emotion is built around the new incarnation of Rahela in the performance, about new incarnation of, of another story and so on. So it's some, again something very ancient you touch in the pattern of theater uh, through this uh, form to keep, uh, to keep it as a long-living project. One of the, the major experience of theater I had was once in Indonesia when I worked in the central Java, Java borderland and I was invited by, by the father of the family who had this uh, circumcision ritual of the Muslim community uh, uh, that he invited a theater group for, for, for this special holiday and so I attended it from the 7th p.m. Uh, and it started with a Quran verse or two at the beginning and then the whole Mahabharata came as a story till the 7 o'clock in the morning. And the whole community was part of that. They knew the story by heart. And I was so jealous, you know, to, to the people who has their stories, to the whole community from the centrists, you know, having this story which is like a microcosmos for their world. And they keep it uh, developing through, uh, through, uh, through centuries. This, is, this was something I felt we lost in our borderlands, that we somehow were cut off this possibility of continuation, of sharing, of developing long, one long stories and building a microcosmos through, uh, through, uh, through the stories uh, like that. So, of course, we couldn't, you know, repeat this uh, kind 
of uh, of theater we we are on the way of searching new forms and new possibilities to 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 make it authentic for a, a, co a particular community and so on but i think there are very many common points we can find in different corners of of the world because coming to the title I do not believe in theater who can breach the other if the theater is just a production of a short-term event and which, uh, when theater is, uh, is immersed in this kind of a festival culture we have today. And of course, very often, like we did in the 70s and 80s, we claim that we try to be open to the audience, to invite them, to cross the border between theater and uh, audience. And we did a lot of efforts, you know, to, to make this theater participatory with different kind of gatherings uh, and other forms of activity. But the main thing was that it was for a short period of time, that there was no possibility to explore it deeper and deeper within the community and together with them. So I and to, to think, to talk seriously about the meeting of the other, I think the time dimension is very important, which we lost. You know, we should try to make our culture less event-oriented and come back to the cultivare. You know, this is the beginning of the world of culture in our Western civilization, organic work, cultivating daily something what can develop in the long-term process as a culture, as an art. To merge, to find the way, tools, uh, instruments to do it. Yeah? And that's my feeling because of what we see in our commercial multiculti world around and event-oriented world, that the, uh, this kind of art of bridging the other is forgotten somehow and that that we should think more and more about counterculture, a new counterculture movement, thinking about the serious meeting with, uh, with the other. So this, these are some intuitions, some reflections, some practices I uh, have from my background, from, from what we do together with Borderland team, now living for 25 years in this small community in Seina insane in the borderlands and all the time searching for new tools, new forms of, uh, of the artwork, of the theater work we, we try to, uh, to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, really thank you Mr. Chizewski mm -hmm. for a really special gift you gave us. Um, Professor Rav Nerben Amos and I will share now a few short comments with you. So Avner, the stage is yours. Thank you. Um, there was a lot of uh, talk today about uh, theater. I'm not going to talk about theater much more. I'm going to talk about history and memory, which are uh, my subjects. And uh, just a few words, a brief commentary about the uh, engagement of Krzysztof uh, Szydziewski uh, with the past. Uh, history and memory, uh, for which he received the Dan David Prize. Now, although the question, I think, was not at the center of his activities, both before and after, uh, was at the center of his activities, both before and after the collapse of the communist regime in Poland in 1989, it seems to me that uh, there is a difference, a big difference between the uh, nature of this uh, engagement, the nature of these activities before and after that dividing line of 1989. Until 89, the communist regime suppressed local memories and uh, local traditions. And one of the 
tasks of the theater company that uh, Chisevsky co-founded was to resurrect these memories and thus enable the emergence of a strong civil society that would, res uh, would resist the regime. After 89, with the establishment of a democratic Polish regime, that same civil society had to do a, a further important step and to come to terms uh, also with the difficult parts of that past, such as the massacres of the Jews perpetrated by members of the same community of remembrance. For example, uh, this is why the Borderland Foundation published uh, the Polish uh, edition of Young Gross Neighbors about the massacres of the Jews of Jedwabne. So only by acknowledging this difficult past and making it part of collective memory, one could create bridges among the various ethnic, religious and national groups of Eastern Europe and to continue living together, uh, respecting each, each other's traditions. So, uh, to sum it up, before 89, we are talking about uh, uh, acting as a, uh, uh, Chisefsky is acting as a member of the uh, opposition, seeking to build a strong counter power. Whereas after 89, with the Borderland Foundation, he acted as part of that same civil society which became responsible for itself and had to assume the entire range of the national past. Now if this rings a bell and reminds you of the difference between the attitude of the Jewish society to the past in Israel before 1948 and what should be its attitude to the past after 1948, this is not by chance. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Christoph, let me begin by saying that I have been moved to realize that although I haven't known you before, and this is our first meeting, in fact we are colleagues, and more of that, we are partners who belong to the same community of theater active activists that still believe in the art of theater as being primarily a transformative encounter. These two expressions, transformative and encounter, are part of our artistic agenda that was consolidated quite long ago, in the 1970s, when we were young and have not yet grasped how lucky we were to live in a very special historical moment. The early 1970s were indeed an exceptional revolutionary moment that happened simultaneously in North and South America and in West and East Europe. These parallel processes generated the concept of the theater practitioner as a committed artist, and theater as performance, as a live, immediate, actual, participatory, liminal, and transformative encounter. This innovative concept, with deep leftish socio-political implications, generated a new theatrical practice as well, based on democratic, collective creation, incorporating for the first time extensive historical, political, anthropological, social, ethnographical, and mythologi mythological research. We still hold the belief 
in the symbolic power of theater as a bridge toward and with the other. We have not yet forgotten here in this department this artistic and political agenda. But I do admit that something has nevertheless changed. While back in the 1970s, theater practitioners believed that theater can make the difference, that is to say, to reconstruct the new society, we have become lately more sober and especially more modest and humble, believing that theater may not be able to make the difference, but still theater can make a difference. And I believe that little by little, an accumulation of many small, sometimes silent a differences will eventually become a strong, diverse, and plural voice in the public sphere. It is out of this stand that I find your work mostly relevant and inspiring for our society here in Israel. Theater as a borderland or as a bridge is not expected to resolve any conflict, to remove borders or to convert the other into one of us. Theater is the bridge first and foremost to oneself a personal voyage by which to meet our deep and sometimes unconscious presuppositions or desires to become a total consensual society or in Plotonius' words, the society of the one and to overcome all the conflicts. Each of us should realize first the danger of such a univocal and unified society and second, appropriate theater as a means of showing the way how to live with the conflict, how to cross the border, how to coexist with the other, how to share the land, not necessarily through cutting and division, but by sharing with. Such an encounter is a craft, says Christoph Czizewski, and theater can be that craft. Theater can build bridges, and in fact, as Christoph Czizewski insists, it is not enough, and I quote, to build a bridge and let it stand. A bridge must be constantly built. Close of citation. The bridge is a saturated metaphor, indicating that the bridge as a liminal space that both connects us to the other and separates us from the other, keeping us from integrating or assimilating the other and thus making the other transparent. The bridge is the thing that we and the other share in common, but at the same time it is placed between us. The bridge is a passage, but it is also distance maintained. Thus the bridge is the measure of equality and diversity. I would say as a closing comment that the idea of the theater activist as a craftsman who is always in the process of building the bridge should take in consideration that theater primarily and imminently is an art form containing all its transformative and bridging virtues within its artistry. Thus, as bridge builders, we should constantly strive to reveal, make happen, signify, and generate new manifestations of this artistry. It seems to me that sometimes, being carried away with political ambitions, we tend to forget that theater is art, is art, is art. Thank you. Okay. Um, we still have time for you to have your comments or questions, so please. Okay. Would you like your metaphor theater as a swing? 
because it shows this movement from one point to another, coming back, going back, moving forward and back, and I presume each movement there is a sort of enrichment to take something, to bring it back, to take something from this point and bring it back. But I also like um, the clip in which you show how performance, the theater performance performs on the audience. We can see that woman, the woman really enjoying being there. Um, so my question would be, what other effects do you notice in, in the communities, in, in the community in which you take this performance? And um, you also mentioned that there are already about three or four generations that are in the show. Practically, how does it work to choose who's going to be in the show? Do they volunteer? How mm -hmm. does it work? Uh, is there a kind of inter intergenerational learning? How does it work in practice? Mm -hmm. To be very, yes, I'm. To be very short, uh, coming from the last question you raised, of course, uh, there's a, a group of youngsters. We start to work with them when they have a 10 years old and, and they are becoming a part of this performance and they have five, six years and the selection is just an engagement. Yeah. So the, usually it's many of them interested at the beginning, but then the serious work starts uh, and um, you, we are giving a lot, but we expecting also to receive uh, a real en a engagement from, uh, from young people as well. So they spend in this team like uh, five, six years. So you can imagine actors, because sometimes I, I'm hearing, okay, they are amateurs, yes? And what about the serious art? Yes, and serious craft. But imagine Keith, which is permanently five, six years in such kind of work, yeah? And, and engaging not only in, in performing, but also writing scenario, collecting stories, you know, being emerged in all dramas, you know, and that. When we performed in New York, for example, in La Mama, uh, this performance for, for two weeks, you know, with full audience uh, uh, each day, the, the question was how you made these children t so mature as an actors. And Bojana Schroeder, who is the director of, of this performance, said that her answer was, I have time only. Yeah? So if you have, to, I'm coming back to this time dimension. Yeah? If you have time, there is no division on a professional or amateur, yes? Because you have another space uh, for develop craft also and, and engagement and so on. So it's changing also. See, sometimes, you know, professionals have two weeks to prepare the role, yes, a uh, character, and then they are changing. So they, they are always claiming that they don't have time to go deeper, you know, to develop the role and so on. This is not the case of this theater we do. And of course, when time is coming to share and to exchange, so we invite a younger group, you know, to be part of the process of exchange, making them tutors, you know, and the elders and transmitting the knowledge uh, to other generation. But after selling the Chronicles, they, they go to another group in our center, which is Małgosia running. Uh, which is for, uh, for, uh, for older. And they have another type of theater also doing. So they can continue or to go to the Klezmer Orchestra, you know, to other activities. And then they go to study and they can come back to, and to find the work in our team. So majority of our team now is, uh, consisted from that kids, you know, from Sane Chronicles and other activities. They, they are coming back and becoming a team members. And when you ask about the audience, yes, the, the community, uh, the thing I think is very relevant for us also as artists is that we have audience who knows the, the, the competence and the craft we do. What, what means that they know if you are lying or not, if you are, if we are in good shape, or not, if you are authentic, we are authentic or not. I think this is something what we lost also in this uh, contemporary, you know, festival culture. You know, it's, it's, I remember the experience from my Garginice time when, when the flamenco master Paco Mayano was visiting us and we were traveling, having expeditions with him. 
and he was doing concerts in Carnegie Hall, you know, all concert halls in the world. But he invited me to his native Andalusia. And in the evening, he had a concert in a small taverna. And I saw him trembling, you know, before this concert. And I'm saying, Paco, you know, you are, you know, you are professional. Yeah, you, 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 you sang in all, you know, big hall in, in the world. And what you, what, what you are feeling, you know? And his answer were all, was, you don't understand nothing. They know. In Carnegie Hall, you know, I can make different kind of flamenco, yes? And, uh, but I, so it meant, uh, and flamenco, of course, is not only art skill, yes? It's the whole life. The, he was trembling because he should witness his authenticity in, in the whole life, you know, his ethical life, spiritual, everything, which is in the song, yes? And to have audience like that, I think it's a treasure. So after this 25 years we work with these people, they know. For good and, and bad, but I think it's, it's our achievement, it's a fantastic situation when, when there is no, nobody to manipulate, yeah? In media, in, you know, reviews, you can manipulate the, 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 the art production in different ways. We all know how it is difficult, you know, on the market. But, in local community, in the, with these people, I think no, no, it could be community on small town, but the same here, yes, everywhere, yeah, that you can have a, a competent audience, yes, not uh, uh, in, from the life side, yes, and, and because of such kind of work you do for many years, you can have it, yeah, somehow. So th this is also about what kind of impact, so uh, I'm always asked what, what we did for these people, but they are doing a lot for us as well. question about the archive was fundamental from the beginning for us because you we needed the ground for for the work also like something we can refer and develop uh, through uh, through uh, through the years and you see i've mentioned that the community was uh, scattered into, into the pieces but our knowledge is also scattered into the pieces so uh, Take the university, yeah? Everything is separated. You know, to have a common knowledge about sa small Seine town, you should combine uh, Judaic studies with Slavic studies, with history, with art. You s now you have different departments for, uh, for that. But in the very, very context of the community, you should have it all together. That's why we created an ar archive also, collecting all these things into under one roof. And it's very special also for our researchers who are coming and writing books because it's a, a unique space that, uh, that library, you know, the other archives you have which collects and not makes these divisions between discipline, uh, disciplines uh, of research and, uh, and so on. So the borderlands should be also in archives uh, in, in, in terms of, you know, having something common you can uh, you, uh, you can accumulate, you can study, you can research, and so on. So it was also a big effort to combine it and to put it together as, as a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. I'd like to take you back to the political aspect of the 
don't love each other <laughs> and uh, we have ma we had and we have many conflicts and this is this work is not about solving conflicts but rather helping to live with conflicts and even to have these conflicts as a potential creative power also something what of course there is this border you should be aware about where the competition quarreling arguing is is still a culture you do it together and is still working for something good and where you cross this border and the destruction process uh, appears but we never uh, claimed to to solve you know, we, we never claim to, uh, to, uh, to erase all, all these tensions, you know, to make this water without bacteria. Yes, it's, it's uh, not, uh, not to make any kind of distillation, but rather, ra rather yes, through, through culture and art activity to, to build this competence of living together, uh, uh, even if there are very conflicted groups of people, memories, you know, cultures and, and so on. So it's more about, uh, more about that, yeah. Which, of course, is, as uh, Sulamit said, uh, never done work, yes. Uh, you, 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 you do it all the time. The, sometimes it's better, so, so uh, I, I could say that 10 years ago we were in in much better situation in Seine, it was much more hope about the future, about Europe, about everything. Today, it's it's more fear again. It's it's uh, so. Uh, n the most important thing is that we keep this workshop working. Yes, somehow in the uh, in the grounds that we are not closing it, saying you know, okay, it's done or escaping uh, from that. But we can somehow be persistent uh, in in that work. Believe me, when, when we came uh, to Seine as artists, people simply did not believe that we will stay. And even our enemies were not treating us seriously, because they said they are artists, you know, very soon they will disappear. Yes, it's not a place to live for them, especially if they get the fame and everything. So, uh, so that, that's the answer also. I think very important to the people that they can believe that culture is something more than this special kind of event and that it's more serious, yes? And, and if you treat them more seriously as, as the others, you are somehow legitimate to ask more serious questions also about the painful things. So, of course, there, there was a strong uh, reaction uh, Abner uh, was saying about when we publish The Neighbors, you know, Jan Gross uh, book, we could exp uh, each day I had a phone call from New York Times, you know, other medias how we are suffering in local community because of publishing this book yeah uh, but it was much difficult with that in the center in Warsaw in the Ministry of Culture than in our local society. Because it was after more than 10 years that we had somehow of legitimacy to ask serious questions also toward Polish-Jewish relationships, yes? So you somehow build your, your credibility you know, through this work. And if you treat people serious, uh, then the answer could be also more serious uh, to that. That's how you establish relationships. Mm -hmm. Please, last mm -hmm. question. 
Thank you. I'm close to the microphone, so <laughs> I'm going to use it. Uh, a quick question uh, concerning something you said in the morning. You talked about uh, performing in senior in uh, an empty synagogue, mm. uh, performing a theatrical uh, piece, in, and, and you said, uh, this is a quote, the place remembers. Now, my question is, what is the relationship between that empty space with the Jewish signs and, and the, probably the ghosts mm -hmm. and the actual performance that is taking place in that space, mm -hmm. how it's, if it is working together. Mm -hmm. The performance you are mentioning, Avner, was the book <laughs> by Szymonanski. It's partly the, the answer to the question. So it was not accidental to us to work, and Małgosia was direct, directing this performance, that he, she chose the book, yes, as a kind of conversation we had with these spirits and ghosts around. So the, the play speaks because very often, you, you know, uh, people were coming to us, our Jewish friends also, and were saying, you know, the Gans Valore. Yeah, everything is lost. Yeah, there is nobody here. But when you live daily there, you feel different. That you live in the space, you, you live in a very special environment, and it calls you to respond, to, to establish conversation. It calls you. And, and then you, you, you respond, yeah, with theater, with other actions as well. This is a kind of per permanent conversation we had. Mm -hmm. So, if this is the epilogue, let me thank you again, Mr. Mr. Chizewski, mm -hmm. the faculty, thank you, Abner. Thank you all, and especially I, I would like to thank Ms. Gabriela David, who stayed with us today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.